G'day, Bill from N More Audio here, and today we're taking a look at Neil Young's fourth album, Harvest, a record born out of raw, spontaneous and serendipitous creativity. Recorded over three sessions in 1971, the album was conceived alongside a motley brand of collaborators. The product was something that was vibrant, honest, refined and altogether immersive. Released in 1972, it soon became a bestseller and launched Young into stardom. It has since been proclaimed as his greatest achievement, so let's take a look at how it all came together. Following the dissolution of Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Neil decided it was time to record another solo album. He had been constantly writing on tour and in January 1971 he returned to his hometown of Toronto. During a performance he showcased several new songs which included Heart of Gold and Old Man. A few weeks later he found himself in Nashville to perform on the Johnny Cash Show, which also featured performances from James Taylor and Linda Ronstadt. It was here that he met producer Elliot Mazur, who had recently opened Quadraphonic Sound Studio, a recording space plonked in the middle of a very large Victorian era house. Young was eager to start recording his new songs right away, asking Mazur to pull together some local talent. He assembled drummer Kenny Budgery, bassist Tim Drummond and pedal steel guitarist Ben Keith, and together they laid the foundations for Old Man, with James Taylor overdumbing the iconic banjo part afterwards. A second session produced Heart of Gold, which came together somewhat serendipitously. By some act of fate, young session players gelled seamlessly, nailing the song in just two takes. Taylor and Ronstadt then overdubbed some harmonies to complete the song. All in all, it took about two hours. Quadraphonic Studios was fitted with a Quad 8 console produced in the late 60s, and much of Harvest was recorded with this machine onto 2-inch, 16-track Scotch 206 tape. Vocals were recorded with a Neumann U87 with no compression and just a touch of tape slapback. Mazur also favoured a Neumann KM86 multi-pattern condenser mic during the sessions, which was used to soak up Young's Martin D45, guitar overdubs, and as an overhead on Buttery's drums. A Shure SM56 was used for the snare and for the hi-hats an AKG 224E. Drummond's bass was DI'd and Keith's slide guitar was also captured by the U87. Due to the close proximity of the members, Mazer used fewer mics to try to minimise the spillage. However, the presence of the room was essential to producing a live feel and the reason these recordings sound so immersive. When Young resumed recording at his Californian ranch in September, it was this vibe that he tried to replicate. The ranch was where the album's electric bass songs were captured, making up the rest of Harvest. Bar two tracks that were recorded with the London Symphony Orchestra and a live recording back in February. Impressed by their synergy, Young invited Keith, Buttery and Drummond to play on the rest of the album, as well as Jack Nietzsche, who worked on the London sessions on piano and Mazer as producer. For the sessions, Young purchased the same Quad 8 console, as well as JBL monitors, a couple of EMT plate reverbs and some tape machines, throwing together a makeshift studio within the confines of his home and one of the property's barns. Rather than having the players use headphones, Mazer installed PA speakers in the barn to use as monitors. This resulted in a lot of bleed between microphones, a sound that him and Young loved. This was reinforced by placing ambient room mics in different places throughout the barn. For these electrified sessions, Young plugged into his 1953 Gibson Les Paul, Old Black, as well as a Gretsch White Falcon for some lead work, usually run through a late 50s Fender FE3 Choi Deluxe. A large component of his dirty guitar sound was this combination of the humbuckers and his crank tweed amp. After the recording was finished, Graham Nash visited the ranch for a playback session, where he was coerced to row into the middle of a neighbouring lake to listen to the rough mixes. Young and Mazer rigged up the PA system between the barn and the house itself, and the duo proceeded to blast the album out across the water, with Neil yelling mix notes from the boat. To complete the album, Crosby, Stills and Nash were invited to New York to record some backing vocals, finally putting an end to the gruelling and erratic sessions. Harvest was a labour of love, the product of a creative and emotional outpouring from an artist at his peak. Young later stated that he would have hated himself if he'd made another record like it, but listening back, it sounds like a record that begged to be made. What's your favourite track off Harvest? Let us know.